Big congrats on the film. It is a hell of a ride, uh, pun intended, of course. Uh, cool. <laughs> We've seen exorcism movies inspired by true stories uh, before, but I don't know if there's ever been as authoritative a voice in this realm as, as Father Morth, obviously. How do you look at his role in history? And, and did you have any skepticism about his stories or were you a believer from the get-go? Well, well I, I, I was really surprised, you know, when I first started reading things that there was actually a job called the chief exorcist for the Vatican. I had no idea yeah. that that role existed. So it was all sort of very fresh information to me. Mm -hmm. But finding out that this man who'd, who'd fulfilled that role for 36 years was also a journalist and had written hundreds of articles and uh, I think a dozen books documenting his experience. So, you know, I'm not sure whether you could say that, you know, I'm neither cynical nor necessarily a believer. You know, I have a sort of objective perspective that that I you know utilize in in my uh in my job but um I'm not really quite sure I have to be truthful where I stand with with uh, um the supernatural in that regard <laughs> yeah yeah well he, I mean more does say at one point the only way your son comes back is is through faith how how would you relate to the how did you relate to the films you know overall religious themes well, you see, I didn't grow up in a religious family, you know, so uh, I don't I don't have that in my background. So like I, I say, I'm sort of like uh, I have a objective perspective on organized religion and uh, what it means in the world. But uh, I certainly believe in, in faith. And uh, it was one of the things that really impressed me about Gabriele Amor that seemed to be, you know, one of the things that was his greatest protection, his greatest armor was the purity of his faith. And um, uh, on top of that, his a, a natural sense of humor. So I suppose if you're spending a lot of time dealing with afflicted people and dealing with the families of the afflicted, you know, having those two things on your side, uh, you know, a purity of, of your in your belief and also the ability to perhaps laugh at yourself and laugh at the situations you find yourself in, um, mm -hmm. That's probably a, you know, what keeps you sane in that kind of gig, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this is tangentially Roman related, uh, but there's a sequel to Gladiator on the way. Uh, some casting announcements recently around that film. Have you kept up with those? Are, are you excited about that one? No, it's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> you're not, uh, you're not, you're not following, on, following on. No interest in seeing what Paul Paul is going to do with that role or anything. No, because I don't know what uh, he's not related to. It's not related to my character. You know, yeah. the story, as far as I know, picks up 30 years or something further along the track. Uh, mm. And it involves uh, Lucius, the son of uh, Connie Nielsen's character. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, you look, you know, uh, I imagine that everybody involved in that is extremely excited. You know, it's Ridley Scott. He's got a huge budget and um, no doubt they'll make something fascinating. But uh, yeah, keep, people keep asking me about it, but you know, they, they seem to forget that uh, Maximus didn't do so well at the end of the movie. Oh yeah. No, I, 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 I remember that. Yes, of course. Uh, well, Russell, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Congrats again on the film. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. You too.